Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you spent much time watching any of my videos, you'll know that I'm a big Korg fan. I have been for many, many years, uh, but really over the last couple of years, I've been in a position to be able to pick up a few uh, of the older synthesizers for the studio. And I've got some some favorites that I've kept. Some have come and gone, but I've, I've got some favorites that I've kept uh, for, for use in my personal music. And uh, actually, I've made the decision recently to sell a couple of those, so let's talk about that. As I mentioned, over the last couple of years, I've collected uh, Korg synthesizers, some of the ones that I would have wanted to have when I was younger, but couldn't afford. And so when I got into a position, uh, the end of 2019, I guess, where I started getting back into writing and recording, I decided to try to get some of those old synthesizers and bring them in. So I've, I've got quite a list of old Korgs that have come and gone from the studio. A few have remained, and a couple of those that I'm, I'm gonna move on from, for better or for worse, will be uh, the M1 up here and the Korg Trinity. Uh, and I will, I will share with you the reasons, I've got a couple of reasons that I'm, I've decided to do this at this time. So the first reason that I've decided to move on from these two synthesizers in particular is I just, I, I like having them in the studio, but I find that I'm just not going to them for sound anymore, uh, or at least as much as I think I should if I'm going to justify continuing to keep them here. The M1 in particular, I use a lot actually still in recordings, but I have the software version not only on my Mac, but I've also got it on my iPad, so I use it when I play live as well. So the M1 gets plenty of use from me, just not in the hardware form. What I found with both of these synthesizers, but the M1 I guess in particular, is that there's not a lot of sound parameter manipulation to be done up on the top of the keyboard itself. So there's really not a reason to to have the hardware anymore uh, in my opinion i've got a nice arturia keyboard controller that you know i can do some parameter editing kind of on the fly uh, in a live situation i really don't have a need for the hardware anymore uh, so that's that's kind of the reason uh, on the m1 i just don't need the hardware because i've got i've got it in software version now it's not that easy with the trinity because Korg has not released a software version of the Trinity, which is is puzzling to me. And I expect, I always expect the next release that they have is going to uh, include the Trinity. And I will be sure to put that back in my studio via software once it comes out. But again, the sounds that you get out of the Trinity are amazing. But there's no editing uh, on the on the hardware itself. So once that comes out in software version. I won't need the hardware to continue to access those sounds. Additionally, the Trinity has a really nice rack module. It takes up a lot less space, and I may end up with one of those at some point if the software doesn't come out in the next, maybe the next uh, release. But again, I, as I mentioned, as I continue to use software synthesizers, I just am not coming back to the hardware as much for a lot of the sounds that I'm using. Additionally, I am hanging on to, I've got the Korg Prologue and the Poly 6 and a Moog Grandmother and an Op 6. So I've got still several sources to choose from for hardware sounds. But the things that I might want to use a workstation for would be like a good piano. And the Trinity and the M1 uh, are not great candidates for that compared to what you can get in software uh, by today's standards. So that's the first reason I've decided to move on from these two. So the second reason I've decided to sell these is I'm just trying to be a little optimistic here and assume that Korg is going to be coming out with a new workstation at some point soon. That may be foolishly optimistic, but that's kind of the hope I'm holding out. So what I'd like to do is start building up my cash reserve uh, in order to get ready for that because I'm sure, you know, whatever it is is going to be well north of $3,000 and I don't have that laying around, but these will give me a good start towards that purchase price. So those are, you know, kind of the two reasons at this point that I'm, I'm looking to move things along. Again, one is I don't, I don't need the hardware for either one of them in terms of controlling the sounds. I'm not going to them as often as I think I should in order to justify keeping them. 
And then of course the second reason is to build up some, some cash reserves for the next big thing. Now one thing I'm not doing is, again, because I don't have to get rid of them right now, they're not hurting anything, they're not taking up more room than they're worth, so on and so forth. I'm not giving them away. Uh, I've had some people uh, send me messages with offers that have just been unreasonable for for what these synthesizers are. So I'm certainly not going to just give them away because that that doesn't get me anywhere. But they'll continue to stay, uh, you know, posted for sale. I am, you know, looking to move them on. But again, I'm not I'm not going to take a bath on them. So. So those are the two synthesizers that I'm looking to move along from the studio and the reasons why. I hope you found this video interesting and would love to hear your comments. You know, what do you think about keeping hardware in your studio for the occasional use? Does it make sense to you? When do you think you know it's time to move on from a synthesizer? So yeah, leave me a comment. I hope that you will consider subscribing to the channel and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.